The 20th century is a disaster for the Constitution, in large measure because of the way it began with uh, Teddy Roosevelt and Woodrow Wilson, the way it moved up to FDR. Uh, the three of them together demonstrating publicly and privately utter contempt for the natural law, the concept that individuals have natural rights that the government can't interfere with, and the concept that the Constitution was written to keep the government off the people's backs. Teddy Roosevelt, his cousin Franklin Roosevelt, and their mentor Woodrow Wilson basically ushered in uh, periods of government in which the government took the position that it could write any law, regulate any behavior, tax any event, and seek any goal, whether authorized or permitted by the Constitution or not. Wilson uh, entered, uh, brought an era uh, to the federal government in which the federal government would have a personal relationship with individuals, nowhere authorized in the Constitution, and would basically tell them how to live, what water they could drink, what food they could, uh, they could consume, even what words they could utter uh, during wartime. Wilson's Justice Department actually prosecuted a man in New Jersey for playing Beethoven's music in public, and another man in Ohio for reading the Constitution, particularly the Bill of Rights, on a public uh, street corner, fearing that that would cause people to criticize the government. FDR ushered in an era of central economic planning uh, much along the lines of his um, uh, colleague at the time running the Soviet Union, whom he referred to as Uncle Joe, of course, one of the most murderous thugs in history, Joe Stalin. Um, FDR admired Joe Stalin. FDR admired Benito Mussolini, who was the fascist dictator uh, of Italy at the time. And the two of them, Stalin and Mussolini, uh, had a tremendous amount of government control over the economy, which FDR envied. He understood very little about economics himself, but he had a lot of big government folks who did around him, persuaded him that there would be more prosperity and more equality in the country if the economy could be centrally planned from Washington, D.C. This attitude defies the Constitution because there's no authority in the Constitution for the Congress to take money from one person and give to another. We are suffering from the big government seeds that they planted, we are suffering from them today. There's an old one-liner that a nation of sheep breeds a government of wolves. And it's true. When we pliantly accept violations of our natural rights, we embolden the government to violate them even more. The more sheep-like the people are, the more wolf-like the government becomes. When I saw the way people um, last month around Thanksgiving pliantly accepted regulations imposed upon them by a bureaucracy called the TSA, which basically said, we're going to take a picture of you that looks like pornography and we're going to keep it, or we're going to touch you in ways so offensive that it could arguably constitute a sexual assault. When I saw people accept that in the name of safety, I thought to myself, government propaganda works. I thought to myself, we are becoming a nation of sheep because we are believing the government nonsense that this will keep us safe. When you believe the government that it can keep you safe by invading your natural rights, you'll end up with neither, not liberty or safety. Who will keep us safe from the government?